Hello everyone and welcome to Create with Chris today at Covert Distributing. Okay, how is everyone? I'm excited today. We are going to be painting an adorable snowman ornament. Let me introduce myself. I am Chris Hoy. I am the owner and founder of Covert Distributing, uh, the pixelated palette easing, uh, CD stencils, Chris Hoy designs, uh, scrapbook outlet, have a lot going on. And probably out of everything, painting is what I love to do and designing. Um, I had a lot of requests that everyone enjoyed painting along with me. So I created, let me switch over real quick. This adorable little flurry snowman ornament and today we are going to be painting this from start to finish. So if you've already ordered your surface um, and you're ready to go, grab your brushes and we'll get started. If you've not gotten an ornament or if you have another surface that you want to paint along with, um, that will work just as well. Today we are going to be covering some of the um, basics of creating a snowman face. I do not use patterns, but this is my design, and there is a pattern included. If you go to Covert Distributing's website, and that is, let me put that up real quick, uh, www.cdwood.com. This is Flurry Snowman Ornament, and it is a free pattern packet. There's a color photo, there's a line drawing, everything you need to create this adorable little design. And... I have Lindsay over there doing the monitoring, so if you have any questions, all you have to do is ask and Lindsay will fill you in. Now, I will tell you, Lindsay is not a painter. However, she has been around painters for so long, I think she probably knows as much as I do. I just don't do it. She just doesn't do it. We're trying to get her, uh, get a brush in her hand, and she does do some really creative. She's more of a paper crafter, so she does some beautiful, beautiful um, paper crafting. So she is definitely talented. So don't let her fool you. She has, she has quite a, um, a design gene in her DNA. So if you have any questions, Lindsay is there. She does all the monitoring. You can say hi. Um, she'll say hi back, right, Lindsay? Do what? I said, if you say hi, you'll, everyone says hi, you'll say yeah. hey back. So she's on a little bit of a delay because with the um, live feed, it takes just a minute to get over to her um, to actually, she'll always be a few seconds behind, if that makes sense. Technology, just, it is what it is. Um, because everyone has uh, ask about doing a painting thing. I have a surprise. Let me get it here. This little flurry snowman is so adorable that, get ready for this. I'm going to take this away. Um, I decided to make a little buddy for him. So in two weeks, mark your calendars, July 28th, two o'clock. We're going to do this guy too. So you'll have a, an adorable little, and aren't they cute together? I was so excited. I thought they turned out really sweet. So, the pattern for the Santa is online, and it is available. Again, let me put that up there, Covert Distributing, cdwood.com. And I think he's called Holly Snowman, or Holly Santa Ornament. So, both of these patterns are free. Um, all you need to do is go to the website, go to the pattern packets. Is there a free section in there? Mm -hmm. Okay, just go to the free section on the patterns and then you can download both of these. If you want to pick up the surfaces, um, Covert Distributing has super great prices on surfaces. These are some that I designed and I thought they were so pretty. So it, isn't this a cute set? Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's get little guy out of the way here. Alrighty, so you know what? I didn't bring my surface out, Lindsay. Do what? My surface is in the office. Oh. <laughs> I, I was, I was uh, teasing Lindsay. I said, I have everything here, but I forgot to prep my surface. So I did that really quick. And um, 
then I forgot to bring it out here. So we can chit chat a little bit longer. Oh, I do have something really fun to share with you too. Um, I painted my design club ornament. I was so excited at how well it turned out. And I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. Thank you. This, this is gonna come out tomorrow. So if you are a member of my Christmas ornament design club, this is, it. this is it. I was so excited. I thought this was such a fun ornament. So um, there's information on the website too about the design club, but look at all that detail. This will drive you crazy, but oh, so worth it. Yeah, look at all that. S super, super cool. I think this is one of my favorites. Okay, so I do have my surface now. We can get started on that. And I always take, um, I did base coat it. I always just kind of take a little bit of fine grit sandpaper and just, sorry if that bothers you, just kind of lightly buff it because you want it to be smooth. The smoother your surface is, the longer your brushes are going to last. Um, if you have a rough surface, it just makes sense your brushes are going to wear down. Now, as I said before, I'm not going to be using a pattern packet or a pattern tracing because I pretty much know where everything's at. I went to school for fine art and one of the rules when you take the figure drawing classes is that your nose is right in the middle of your face. So when I paint a snowman, I always start out with the nose. Have you ever painted the eyes and then the nose and then you run out of space for the mouth? Well, here's the secret. If you start out with the nose first, you're always going to have room for everything else. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I think in the pattern I used Warm Sunset, this is persimmon. Anytime you get, um, oh dear, sorry about that. I'm using my iPhone. Um, anytime that you paint a nose, you just need a nice pretty orange. So this is persimmon. Uh, Warm Sunset is a, a new color. It is absolutely beautiful. Okay, it says my settings are almost full. Again? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Just going to squirt a little dab of the persimmon on. And I've got my radical round. This is the brush I designed. I wanted a nice sharp point and a big full belly. Now, this is not hard. This is the middle of the face, right? So I'm just going to start with that and I'm just going to press and pull out a nose just like that. Don't make this difficult. This is super easy. You can go back and smooth it in if you want it bigger or smaller. You can always make it bigger. However, if you start out with a ginormous nose, it's kind of hard to hone it back down. Just like that, we've got the nose in there. We're good to go. So we're going to move on, let this dry. We're going to hop around um, so that we don't waste any downtime as we're waiting for it to dry. Now, on the eyes, and I'll just leave this little guy here. This is my painter's pal. I don't know if um, you were in on when I had this design, but I did this so that I could have circles and ovals. These are perfect for eyes. So if I wanted to use this for the eye, I could just lay it down there. Let me zoom in there. I've got the little one. I can lay it in there and stencil it. It makes a perfect little eye shape. Um, another option is using the handle end of a small brush. And I'm just going to go with that. This is my Epic Script Liner. I rarely use black for the eyes because I think their black is too flat and too stark. This is soft black, uh, Payne's Gray. If I were doing a white snowman, I probably would go with Payne's Gray because I would lean more towards um, the cool undertones, the blues with the white. With the light buttermilk, it's more the warm tones. We're going to shade with light cinnamon, so we'll st stay more with that color. To do the eyes, I'm going to dip. I'm going to dot straight down and I'm going to drag it up. And what this does creates a kind of a pear shape. Now, if you want both eyes to be the same, clean your brush off every time you dip and dot. Dip, 
the eyes right there, dot, and I'm going to pull it up. I do lean it in just a touch. Now, if you lean it in too much, it kind of gives that, um, makes it look a little mongoloid. So, you want to keep just a slight tip on it, a little tilt, and then we'll do the other one. Dip, dot, and drag that straight up. And they should be very similar in size. I made that one just a little bit taller. I'm okay with that. Maybe. He's winking. <clears throat> Let's see, I'll just make this one. Okay, I just went back and drug that out. Now, because I did the dip dot thing, there's there's a considerable puddle of paint in there. I can go in and just lift some of that out with a little bit of a paper towel and the handle end of my brush. I didn't use much paint on that. So we'll let that dry. We got that going on. Let's do the cheeks. Like I said, we're going to hop around till one thing gets dry and then we can do the other. I am using watermelon slice. It's gone pretty quick, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I should have Lindsay over there painting along. Jen is painting along. Jen is painting. Jen is on vacation. Today's her last day of vacation. Um, so she's at home painting along. We'll have to ask her about that when she comes back tomorrow. Now, I am working. I have my number three spectacular stencil. I am working the paint into the bristles. And I want to just really get a fair amount of paint in the bristles. I don't want a lot on the tip. I'm going to dry brush the cheeks. So I'm going to take and just get that extra off of there. It looks like I'm wiping it all off, but I don't want too much on there. Because it's always stronger than what you think. Alright, so it's a little bit strong yet. I'm going to brush it off again. A little bit strong yet. I'm telling you, you don't need much. Okay. I'm going to wipe that off because it's super strong. And I don't want hussy red cheeks. We just want nice little rosy cheeks. So I have wiped and wiped and wiped this on my paper towel. Just want a hint on there. And a little bit, okay, there we go. Now I'm going to build this out. I don't want it to be super bright. If you want your cheeks to be equal value, work on them both at the same time. Don't do one and then do the other one. Go one side and then the other side. If you do a swirl, you're going to get a hole in the middle. If you do kind of an X, you can get that middle filled in. See how soft those are. I can swirl around the outer edge. Now this will continue to intensify until I decide, hey, that looks pretty good. So maybe just a little bit more. It's really cold out. My snowman is, has a little frosty cheeks. Okay, done. Now, let's go back to the nose. When I am using a limited color palette, I'll stick just with that. And today we're going to be using some of the reds to do all the um, shading and highlighting, or all the reds in the hat. Um, watermelon Slice is not going to be dark enough. I want to shade the nose, so I'm going to go into the Deep Burgundy. What this does, in addition to not getting 100 bottles of paint out, it's going to give you more continuity between all the colors. So I have my awesome eighth inch angle, which is perfect for any kind of ornament this size. And I'm going to pick just a little bit on the toe of my brush. And I'm scooting my brush through that and working it in. Now, I'm going to go. I want to scoot along. I'm going to compare here so you can see. Just want to scoot along all of these ridges. And I can create that by the way that I float the paint onto the brush. So. I'm going to scoot that on there, a little more moisture on my brush. If your brush does not flow well, you need more water. See how I can go up there and pull that 
little red shape in there. I'm not sure you can see that. Let me go in just a little. There we go. So I can go in there and create those ridges in the nose and I can darken that bottom edge. We don't want a red nose, but you want to make sure. I'm not sure I like that little bump there, so let me smooth that out just a little. There we go. Um, you don't want a red nose, so make sure that you don't get too zealous with the deep burgundy. You want to create a little bit of highlight on the top of the nose. Again, we're just going to um, do a little bit. Now, if I put white on there, it's too... It's going to blend into the background too much. You're not going to see a whole lot. But if you mix a little bit of that orange in with it, whether it's the warm sunset or the persimmon, you just need a little bit of brightness. Let me go back out just a little bit. I never know which way this goes. There we go. So I'll grab a little bit of Snow White. This is really um, precise mixing here. Little bit, little bit. Kind of, and I still just have it on the toe of my brush. It's not across the whole brush. And I'll just go in here. And I'm kind of just using the toe of my brush. I'm not laying it down flat. Now, if I decide I need a little more brightness on that, I just go back with a little bit of white. Kind of brighten that up. You just need a little bit of brightness on that. Not a lot. And we can always go back, and I probably will go back. You can see how much brighter this one is um, and a little more precise. So I will go back with a little bit of white just to enhance that later on. I'll let this dry. You know, when you go into wet paint to add more highlights, you just end up adding mud. All right, let's brighten those eyes up a little bit. And I need to add that little bit of wetness and a little bit of sparkle in there. So I am going into Snow White with my awesome angle. Again, this brush is just perfect for small ornaments and detail work. Okay, let's see how we're going to scoop around the bottom and up the right side of each eye. Need to get my glasses on here. And just that little bit. Don't let it get too washed out. You need that dark in there. Okay, can you see that? Is that showing up? What am I looking for? I'm the, not there yet. The, oh, okay. That um, little bit of highlight on the eyes. I'm just going to go back and en enhance that just a little bit more. Whoop. Usually I can do that in one scoop. I was trying to impress you and I didn't do that well. I can see it. Okay, very good. Um, a little bit of a dip dot sparkle in the top left. That's going to add some whimsy and a little bit of brightness. And this nose is probably dry enough. I am going in with my Epic Script Liner. That's the 18 knot. If you're looking for a good liner, this is the best one you'll ever find. And we want to add just a little bit of brightness on that nose. And Does it say anything? It's live. Okay. So let's see if this works. All right. Okay, we had to switch the whole system around, so um, not sure what happened, but we had to change our format quite a bit. And for those of you that are just now joining, we are doing the Flurry Snowman. And we did paint his eyes and his nose and his cheeks, so we are ready to move on. So... Yay, it's back. Hooray. Okay. Oh, nothing like a little bit of a challenge to throw everything into the... I lost my paintbrush. Alrighty. <laughs> we are working on adding his eyebrows, eyelashes, and mouth. 
and I said before a couple of times, but I'm not sure how much was missed. Um, the eyes are painted with soft black. However, to do the eyelashes and the eyebrows, if you thin soft black down, you're gonna thin it out and it's gonna be very washy and not very strong. So I am going with Lamp Black, my Epic Script Liner. I'm gonna reload. And you wanna be able to get a nice thin line. So check it out, make sure you're, you can have nice long strokes without uh, dragging your brush and you wanna be able to have your paint flow very smoothly and very easily. So I'm going to, I did that one. And we'll add the other one. Now to do the eyelashes, I usually add two or three. If you do more than that, um, it becomes a girl. Now that just makes him look so merry. Look what a difference those little eyelashes make. Aren't they adorable? Okay, mouth. We'll just do a little little scoop mouth. That's all we need. Now, I want to make sure that the features fit into his face, not just sit there painted on top of his face. And to do that, I'm going to use the light cinnamon to create some shadows. And you know, on your face, you have your eye sockets and your bottom lip. You've got your eyebrows. So everything has um, an area where if you look at it closely, there will be a shadow beneath it below your nose. So we're going to add those shadows with light cinnamon. Now we don't want to have a brown snowman. So this is going to be a shadow, which shadows are transparent. We don't want to have heavy, solid shadows. Are we still working, Lindsay? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I'm going to be using my um, awesome angle. Again, I want to have that small control with a, a small brush. And I'm just getting a little bit of that light cinnamon on the toe of my brush. I can always go back and add more. If you add too much, it's a real stinker to try to get that heavy paint off of there. So we'll float just a little bit. This is an ooh -ah awesome moment. So. Look how, what a difference that makes. All of a sudden, his eyebrows really kind of sink into his face. Now we'll put a little bit under his eyes. If you go too heavy under his eyes, he's going to look like he does not feel well. So we want to make sure that he, we have a healthy snowman. And now under his nose, you can do a couple different things. Um, let me show you what I did. I just kind of scooted a little bit of a shading underneath. That one is way too heavy, so I can go back. This is why you want to make sure that your cheeks are dry. And we'll put just a little bit. And I'm going to scoop it around this side over here, just so it looks like it's tucked in. You know how a carrot shoved into the snow. We want to make sure that we have a little bit of where it's put in there and there's gonna be a little bit of a shadow. Now watch what happens to his mouth once you put just a little bit underneath that. Okay, get enough moisture on your brush so it'll flow smoothly. And if it's too heavy, I can go back with a clean brush, soften that down. See, all of a sudden his features just really fit well into his face. When I add a little bit of sparkle on his cheeks, I'm nervous about doing this because I always stick my hands in it and smear it. Usually I wait and do the last on that. We'll be brave today. Using my stylus and Snow White. And we'll do one, two, three. I think three is a cute little number. Look how that brightens his little cheeks up. Boom, we have his little face finished. Now, all of my snowmen have the same little faces. And, oops, 
I wanted to show you some differences because I want this to dry, so we'll set him aside so I don't smear it. Um, this little guy, same face, just a different color shading. This one is, I think, warm white shaded with charcoal gray. Totally different look. This one is light blue shading. This is more in the teal color. So again, a totally different look. This one is more of a Prussian blue uh, shading. Totally different look. Same face on all of these. Little faces are the same. Okay, here's another one I did. Um, this one is gray. I don't have cheeks on him. I just noticed that. He does need cheeks. Okay. Not funny. Okay. But you can see the difference um, that just switching out your, your base color, white, warm white. This one's white. This one's white. But just switching the shading colors, totally different look. So um, it's, it's fun to create and play around with those colors. Using the same technique, you can look so different. Alrighty, so this is fairly dry. Let's go ahead and add a little more shading. Um, we want to start to create the top and the bottom. Now, if you want to, if you are nervous about painting a straight line, everybody has painter's tape, good stuff. Don't skimp on the quality of your painter's tape because if you get a painter's, a, a good quality painter's tape, you'll always have a good seal on the edges and you're going to get crisp, clean lines. Um, if you get the cheaper stuff, sometimes it doesn't stick very well. And um, when you lift it up, that's when you see it where it doesn't, uh, it, it slips underneath the seal. So make sure you get a good uh, painter's tape. Another tip, do not lay stuff on top of it because if you're, if you lay something heavy on it and you get a dent in your roll of tape, when you put it out, you'll, you might have a ripple in that area. So don't, I learned that the hard way. I used to throw it in my travel bag and all of my tape had little dips in it. So now I have one of those plastic containers. Um, it comes in a container. The green tape the does, tape the frog tape, yeah. So I just hang on to that and switch it out. Another tape you can use is the tape for curves. This stuff is really awesome. So if you want to go around all these edges, I'm not a big fan of trying to be perfectly, um, get a perfect edge. However, this tape for curves does curve. So I can, I can bend it around and get perfect edges. So. Anything that you need to help make your painting life easier, go for it. We don't want this to be a burden. We want to be able to enjoy what we do. Okay, so now we want to section off the top and the bottom. And because this is a short area, I'm just going to wing it. If you want to get out your ruler and make a straight line, don't feel like that's cheating because that's just... Okay, that's just going to make your job easy and you want it to look good. So whatever it takes to get that on there, make it look good. I'm using a half inch angle and light cinnamon. want to make sure. There we go. That one's a little bit smoother. And I think I want a little more shade down here. Actually, I want a little more up here, too. I just want to go back there and strengthen it. Um, have a little dog hair in there. Bring my dog, Maggie. Well, both my dogs, Maddie and Maggie, come to work with me every day. There are therapy dogs. Right, Lindsay? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. All right. So, we are ready to... I'm going to let that dry, and we can go back and add the greenery. I want to at least cover this top area. And I usually go in and base coat, and then I go back and um, work in the highlights and the shading. 
because I'm not a patient person. So for me to sit here and wait for everything to dry, I just know realistically that's not going to happen. Now, what is nice about this, we have that light buttermilk base on the background. This is going to really help enhance and ramp up the, ramp up the um, colors a little bit. And by that, what I mean is if I put foliage green on just a dark surface, I'd have to put several coats before it is solid enough or bright enough for me to be happy with it. I am loading my radical round and I use a minimum number of brushes. I don't use a lot of different brushes. You can use a flat if you want. I like the radical round because I can load a fair amount of paint in it and go pretty far before I have to reload. Light layers of paint always look better than heavy solid layers. Everybody has a way, a direction that they paint easier. Mine is kind of left to right or top to bottom. And I'm just gonna take this. If I take my time, I can get a fairly smooth line. And I'll start on this end. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want it to look nice, yes. But it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna do that rim and then this little one, one, two, third one from the top. I wanna add that one as well. What's nice about this radical round, if you keep an even pressure, pressure you're gonna get the same width line. Oops, I got a little curve in that. Now just straighten that up. Okay, so that's not bad. Um, if you're tidy with your strokes at this point, it's going to be a lot less work later on. So take your time and be careful so that you don't have to work that hard as you put the next layers on. And by that, I mean, make sure that you lay your paint on smoothly. Kind of, um, if you see brush strokes, that's okay as long as they're all uniform. If they're kind of this way, this way, that way, you know, kind of messy. Um, it's, it's going to be a lot of work. So just be careful on how you lay those down. Hear that dog hair? And I said we were just going to do the top. Let's go ahead and do the bottom too. Get that on there. Again, if you need to use tape to tape this off, it just takes a little bit longer for it to dry, but it, it will definitely be um, important to have these straighter lines. Okay, that one. And then I'll add these little ones here, uh, above and below. I'll go this way so I don't drag my hand through it. We all know what our weaknesses are and I usually end up with my hand in the paint. And then we'll add another one down here. I'm thinking by the time I add all of these, those top ones should be fairly dry. And this bottom one is going to be green also, but I wanted this one to go horizontal and this one I'll pull down straight or vertical, I guess is the, and that way it will define those two areas and even though the paint is the same, by the way you shade it, it's gonna divide it. Okay, now let's go back up here to the top. Whenever you use red, and on this um, light surface, I wonder if, yeah. I always like to put melon below on the red, or cactus flower, or vintage pink, any kind of a brighter color because it's really going to help make that red um, just really be bright and festive and definitely want this to be 
a happy ornament full of all those beautiful Christmas colors. So um, I'm going to give a base coat, still using the radical round. I'm going to drop in and do the red stripes. And just load your brush up really well. And I do load my brush up well, but you want to maintain the integrity of the brush. So you want to have still have a good um, slender barrel on your round or your liner. If you have a flat, make sure you keep those sharp chisel edges. And we'll just go in and base coat these red stripes. These are going to be a lot easier because that green's already in there. It kind of gives you a baseline. And we'll put this. I'm going to get that top in there so I have a good visual to fill that in. Now, if you do get kind of messy, you know, we can go back and touch it up. I'm just saying that it's a lot easier if you take care now. And then you don't have to worry about doing that later. I'm all for saving time and doing less work and having a better looking project. Whew, that's a mouthful. I totally think I could do this. Lindsay said she can do this. Jen I... said it too. Okay, so <laughs> everybody encourage Lindsay because I think she would be an excellent painter. She's very meticulous with her paper crafting. She's beautiful work. All right, so that's all we're going to do on the pink or on the bottom. If you wanted to go with a different color theme for uh, Christmas ornaments, you know, with, with pinks and greens, and you could even swap this out for blues, I, you know, I think it's so much fun to shake up the color palette. So much fun. All righty, let's, let's work on the peppermint stripes now. And I am going to Just go back in. I'm hoping that my paint is not too dry. I'm going back into the watermelon slice. I've got a number two shader. And yeah, it's still fresh enough. I want to get a brush that's going to be the exact size of the stripe that I want to create. So if you're doing something bigger, get a bigger brush. Don't work so hard. I want to do one stroke and have it done. Because I don't put a pattern on here, I know I have three stripes. The first one's going to be smack dab in the center. So I'm going to start right here. Let me get my head in here. And pull it straight down. There. Done. We'll do the same thing. A little bit dry. Now as I go on this, there's a little bit of curve. I'm going to bring that out as well so that we have a little bit of curve. My brush is not flat. Okay, there we go. Not enough moisture on my brush. See how it drags. You don't want that. There we go. Does it have to be perfect? No. That's what you want right there. You want to be able to flow from top to bottom nice and smooth. Since we're on such a roll, let's go down here and do the same thing. See how flat that brush is? Keep even pressure. You're going to have the same size stripe from top to bottom. Don't push down. A lot of times if we run out of paint, our first inclination is to press down. You're just going to get a fat stripe. And that is not good. Okay, good enough. Alrighty, so we need to add smaller stripes in between because when you thin the watermelon slice down, you're going to get a pinker shade. I'm going to go to deep burgundy. When I thin it down, it's going to be a brighter red. So that's what I'm going to use for my tiny stripes. Epic script liner. And normally I do two stripes. This is too small. You only need one. If you want to, you can put a green one in here. There we go. Oh, 
those are really thin. This is such a great brush. You always want something that's going to make your painting life a little easier. This is it. Now we'll go back and add some shading. It's going to really make those uh, brush brushes, those um, stripes a little bit redder, but we're going to leave them that way for now. I know everybody's going, ew, they don't look good. Well, yeah, they don't, but we work our magic and that's why we love what we do. Let's go back to the green and we're going to pick up some plantation pine. And my awesome angle, we got little stripes, so we don't need a big shader to do this. And I'm gonna pull that across the bottom, edge of those green stripes. Oh, isn't that pretty? Okay. Once you get the brush loaded, you'll be able to go pretty fast. And we'll do the same thing up here. Plantation pine again with the, and I'm thinking that bottom stripe, I might strengthen that a little bit more, but that's okay. This is where you can really straighten up those edges. You see how that was kind of shaky and I, I just evened it up pretty quickly. Same thing here, a little bit shaky on that bottom edge. I can clean that up nice and sharp. Now, don't get this too dark because we're gonna go back with the plantation pine to add stroke work. So, if this is too dark, that's not gonna show up. So you wanna keep that light and kind of bright. You can always go back and darken it. It's so hard to go back and try to re rework it. And this is a fun ornament. You don't want it to be a um, cumbersome painting. Okay. And Colleen wants to know how you load that brush. My awesome angle. Colleen wants to know how I load my brush. I usually take, let me go in a little bit closer here. Okay. I have the corner, the toe of it, and I just kind of work it into the paint. And it's kind of hard to see, but if I pull it across, I just have, have the paint on the toe. And I work it in so that it walks across the brush about midway. I've got paint on the toe, but when you work it, you're gonna let it walk across about midway. Then when I go back to float, I'm just going to put the toe down and the rest of the brush is clean and I can just pull it across. You get a really nice float. Okay, so we're gonna go in, load the toe. Work it in, go across the bottom. And I've got enough moisture on my brush that I can really move that paint and work it in without having to go back and get more paint, more moisture, whatever. Now down here at the bottom, this one's a bigger area. So I'm going to go back to a quarter inch angle, do the same thing, load the toe work it in. So I just have paint on the toe, but the rest of the brush is clean. When I go back and forth, it walks it across and I can scoop underneath. I want to go down this back side and I can use that clean part of the brush just to move that paint around. So I've added just a little bit of a shade around, kind of scoop it around underneath that bottom rim and down the side. Let the side over here be brighter. That way we don't have to go in and add the highlights. We can, but we don't have to. And I'm, I'm all for looking good the first time around. So let's go ahead and go back to these red stripes. We want them to be red, not pink. So I am going into watermelon slice and my radical round. I am loading my brush well. 
but I don't have heavy paint. We've got that beautiful pink background. So what I can do when I lay this over top is just create kind of a transparent wash. Boom, just like that. With this radical round, you press it down, you can get the width of your area that you want to cover. Don't push it real fast. You wanna let that brush do the work for you. And I, the paint is loose enough that I have time to work with it so I can uh, cover the area without worrying about it being dry and then you, you get into lifting and all that kind of jazz. And what a huge difference a little bit of watermelon slice makes. And that's why it's my favorite color. Okay, let's let that dry. Let's go back to Mr. Snowman here. And he needs some greenery. Now, when I first did this, I thought he needed holly leaves. And I did put holly leaves on the Santa. However, when I put the holly leaves on it, it, it just was... I don't know, too heavy or too thick or something. Didn't look right. So I took them off, put the little pine branches on there, and that just made him, um, it just worked so much better. So let's go ahead and get these holly, oh golly, pine branches in there. And I think if you, if you download your instructions, it says deep, how's her deep green? wrong. Actually, it says Deep Hauser Green, which is even more wronger. Um, it is plantation pine, so if you have that, I did correct it, but some of the patterns that went out in the beginning might have had that on there. All right, so do you need a pattern for this? Nah, because you, you know, your face is going to be, you can see my little face is not identical placement wise. My eyes are higher on this side than they are over here, so my pine branches are going to be a little bit different. Put one here, one here, and we'll put one right there. All right, so because you, um, yours may not be the same as mine unless you did use the pattern, just go ahead and put it where it needs to be. Or you could stick it down here at the bottom. That would be cute too. Okay. Epic Script Liner. We're just going to do some little pine branch needles. Don't make this a big deal. Now, one thing you want to do, you don't want them to go up and in because it'll look like a feather. You want them to go up and out almost like a water fountain. You don't want, definitely don't want it to look like a feather. Now, I'm making this up here a little bit darker because it's in that shadowed area and I want it to stand out. Just like that, that's all you need to do. Just put a few in there. Barb wants to know how you finish the edges. Oh, I will finish the edges. We'll do that before, um, don't let me forget Lindsay. Barb wants to know how we finish the edges. My finger painting trick. With this one, it'd be a little bit more difficult because it's not so perfect smooth around the edge. All right, foliage green. We want to lighten this up, add some highlights, and fill it in. Again, if your brush is loaded correctly, it won't take long to add these in here. You see how quickly that fills out. So if you're doing a bunch of these, you should be able to crank them out relatively fast. And I do, I don't just put pine needles on each side. I wanna make sure that I add some in the center so the branch looks round, it doesn't look flat. Now, to brighten this up a little bit more, we'll go back and add white, but if I try doing it now, it's just gonna mix in. So let's go ahead and add the berries. I am using watermelon slides. Again, I'm just gonna use the handle end of my brush. I'm gonna dip and dot. And I like to stagger my berries. Um, 
in these in these void areas so that I don't have one like right in the middle. If you want to just put one right in the middle is where it needs to go. If you're doing three, you need to stagger them around so that you don't have um, empty holes. So I'll put one right up there. Here. And there. They don't have to touch. You just need to be close. Now, we've got those mounds of paint in there. I can go back and take the same brush, just lift some of that paint out. It's going to dry faster. You're going to lower that mound, and you'll still have that nice round image uh, for the berry. Okay, let that dry. Let's go back up here. I told you we were going to jump around a little bit. Uh, let's go back to the peppermint. And do a couple different things. If you want to, you can take your little flat shader and you can shade each one of the, the peppermint stripes. Or you can go in with your quarter inch angle, deep burgundy, and we'll just do the whole shebang. Okay, so. Now, you know that place where they didn't connect? Well, guess what? It's gone. A little bit of shading works magic. Okay, and I'm trying to crispy up that bottom edge so I can go back over it several times, get a nice sharp. You can see here how uneven those stripes are. Just go back. Just like that, I've cleaned that up. Now I do want my shading towards the bottom a little bit stronger than the top. Down here at the bottom, I'll flip it around. My shading up here is going to be a little bit stronger because you've got a, a bigger lip. So it's going to create a darker shadow. Again, this is a shadow. It's a little bit transparent. You just want that darkness to create that curve. I love shading. I think that is the magic of what we do. Isn't that pretty? I'll tell you what, I'm going to switch gears real quick because I want to do some more on the um, white down here. I'm going to add a little bit of light cinnamon. All of a sudden this will really look bright. So we'll just do a little bit of light cinnamon, kind of scoop along the bottom edge of that, and a little bit up here. See how that just tones it down and softens it. That's that's all you want. I thought it would be fun too. Gosh, I'm jumping all around. You could even tie a little scarf around his neck. That'd be cute. A little ribbon. Alrighty, back to the reds. And I'm staying with my awesome angle, picking up deep burgundy. And we'll scoop right along the bottom edge here. Now you're on the red, you can go a little bit stronger. You want that to show up. And I stick with this awesome angle because it gives me more control in these smaller areas. And did you see that little blurb I did right there? And we'll scoop that off. Okay, add some down here. This little guy's not hard at all to do, but I think he turned out so cute. Alrighty. We need to add some stroke work, some dip dots. Let's go back to the greenery. I think that's dry. I'll get some white paint. And I'm going to add some highlights in that, those pine needles. Pay attention to where you add them because you don't want these pine branches to disappear. You don't need a lot, just a few. 
A little bit of paint makes a big difference. See how that just a little bit right there. Just that little bit up here really brightens that up. That's all you need, not a lot. Now I do think right here it's kind of thin. So I'm gonna go back with a little bit more of the, and, and this is something I encourage you to do as you're painting along, to, to just look, stop for a minute and look and see if you need to add a little something here or there. Okay, that's better. And I don't know if I can add white in there yet or not. Okay, just that little bit. And sometimes you think, oh, it's kind of fussy painting, but sometimes just that touch of paint will make a huge difference. A little bit of highlight on those berries. Oh, that looks good. Alrighty, so let's add some stroke work. And I'll just start at the top with Plantation Pine. Epic Script Liner, thin your paint so you can do some long, beautiful strokes without having to reload. And we'll just put a couple, press and pull, press and pull. Okay, nice. I'm going to add some across here. Just some design to break up these solid areas is all you need. Doesn't have to be a big deal. Just think it makes it look kind of cozy. And we'll put some down here too. Okay. This is where you can tell if your shading is a little too heavy. You might have to go stronger on your um, stripes. Over here it's a little bit stronger, so I, or a little bit darker, so I just strengthen my stripes on that. Alrighty. And a little white. Gotta brighten those peppermint stripes a little bit. Just that little bit. Let me go out just there. I put a little stripe of white here, a little bit down here. When wasn't very straight, that bothers me. Okay. Let's add some dip dots, plantation pine. And we'll put a few across the top here. Make sure if you add dots that you don't get, you keep them all consistent in size. You don't want them to get bigger, smaller kind of thing. We'll add some down here. I can usually do two without reloading. The first one's a light touch. The second one, when you add it, you can press just a little harder. And this always surprises me when we put the white on here, how much it brightens it up. So much whimsy. And I think because I want to, I think I'm going to add some up here, maybe. I don't know. What do you think? I'll try it. If you don't like it, you don't have to add it on yours. I went with a smaller dot, kind of like that. It just brightens it up even more. All right, so we've, we're down to this little trim down here at the bottom. Bring that down here. 
And when I did this, I couldn't decide if I wanted it foliage green or plantation pine. So what I did was I used both. And you can double load anything, even an 18 knot script liner. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull one side into plantation pine and the other side into foliage green. So I have, can you see how half and half, right? And then we'll do these little stroke works right here. And we'll just pull that in. And when I reload, I do the same thing. It just gives a little more color than just one or the other. And add some watermelon slices, berries. It is so hot here, the air is running full steam and everything's drying quickly. Now when that dries, I'll add a little teeny tiny highlight on each one of those berries. Whew. I think we went like 90 mile an hour to get this done. But is any not the cutest little thing? Don't forget the edges. The edges. I did. I forgot the edges that quick. All right, let's see if we can do that without me sticking my finger in the wet paint. Um, decide what color you want to do the edges. I usually do um, uh, either a charcoal gray, soft black, paints gray. I like, I like the look of this. Now, if you want to bring this design around the edge, that's another option. But what is nice about this, I don't know, okay, this one kind of has a messy edge, so maybe it'll show up a little better. Well, we'll go with this. I like to use finger painting. And for those of you that have, I've, I've told this before, it's kind of a fun thing. Um, your fingers are always close by, hopefully. Uh, you'll never lose them, which is handy. Um, they're easy to clean you have good control, and your finger is no different than a brush. You don't use a dry brush, don't use a dry finger. If you um, overload your brush, you're gonna have a mess. If you overload your finger, you're gonna have a mess. So what I do is I just dip my finger in the water so it's kind of wet, and I'm gonna load just a little bit of paint. I'm careful, I don't want to, um, overload so if I can still see my and this is kind of hard I can still see my fingerprints through the paint I know I've got it loaded just about correctly now when you're painting with a brush you're not going to crush it onto your surface you're just going to gently glide it same thing with your finger if you just gently glide it around the edge you can cover those edges up very carefully Perfect. Nothing on the front, nothing on the back, but the edge is perfect. Now, if it takes two coats with your brush, it'll take two coats with your finger. These little um, bumpy parts are not going to be so easy to do with your finger unless your finger is shaped a lot differently than mine. You'll have to go out and get your brush to get in those little crevices because it's kind of hard to get your finger in there. But look how perfect that is. Nothing on the front, nothing on the back. Just a very light, soft touch. You can do um, straight edges very quickly. Don't lose control. Don't go so fast that you, you get messy. This is just a super, super great way. I always keep the surface up so I can see the front of it. So when I glide my finger, um, I can make sure, again, if you press too hard, it'll get on the front. So if you press too hard and you get on the front, just grab a little baby wipe, kind of go around the edge and you know pull some of that off. I didn't make much of a mess, so. But you can straighten those edges up very cleanly. What I would suggest 
if you've not done this before, is to uh, spray seal it. And I use, my favorite is the, um, got a little bit, the Americana Matte Spray Sealer. I love it, absolutely love it. So spray seal it and then do your edges. And if you get any messy anywhere, then it's just super, super easy to clean it up. Okay, did we forget anything, Lindsay? I don't think so. I would show the Santa one more time. Okay, next, not next week, July 28th. We're going to make a buddy for this guy. This is um, Holly Santa. The pattern is free. It is on Cupboard Distributing's website, www.cdwood.com. And I'm sure Lindsay has put a link on there that you can go to and download it. Um, we do have the surfaces available as well, so you can, those are not free. $1.95. $1.95, okay, not, not bad. Um, so you can make a set of these ornaments. I always say the backside's a great place. You can put sentiments, personalize them, put the year, a date, a special memory, something like that. So um, I hope you enjoyed painting with me today. I do apologize for the problems we had with our technology. Oh my goodness. Let me go back here real quick. So, okay. I have to stand up because um, we changed cameras and everything's a little bit different. So uh, I do apologize for any problems we had with technology. Um, hopefully next time we'll have all that figured out and we won't have any issues at all. Right, Lindsay? What? We won't have any issues next time. Hopefully not, no. Yeah, so. I got plans. Next week, what are we gonna do next week? We're gonna do something a little bit different. Um, I've got some fun ideas that we wanna do, um, show some different techniques. We're not gonna do a, a complete project paint along, but it'll be fun. So join me next week, uh, Tuesday, July 21st at two o'clock for Create with Chris. And in the meantime, paint your ornaments. Please put them on Facebook so we can see them. Love to see what you're doing and uh, share with everyone because that's what we love to do, right? Paint and share. So, oh, and I forgot to mention again, um, our Zoom Summer Fest is coming up. We have, um, we're still taking reservations. It's going to close July 31st. So we're, we're kind of coming up on that deadline. Sandy McTeer is coming, or not coming, but she's going to be joining me. She's virtually coming. She is virtually coming here um, due to all this COVID jazz. Uh, we're doing Zoom classes. And for those of you that have already taken the Zoom classes, we're hearing some really, really great feedback. I think it's an excellent opportunity for us painters to stay connected to be able to share, to learn, um, and to, to do what we love to do. So I think it's very important that we continue to be able to have classes and to stay connected. We do have Facebook, however, um, it's nice to chat with one another as well. So we have uh, three great days of painting, six awesome classes. You can sign up for one, you can sign up for all of them. And what we're doing is we're sending out class kits. So the registration covers uh, the class, it covers the um, surfaces, everything but paint and brushes. And when you sign up, you get a list of what you need. So mark your calendars, think about it. It's a great opportunity. Uh, registration is gonna be closing into the month. So um, time is kind of coming to a close for that. And we're super, super excited. It's gonna be a fantastic time. Um, Sandy and I have been working on this for a very long time. So uh, trying to get it all together and, all, and uh, all the kinks worked out and it's gonna be a great day. So thank you for joining me, Create with Chris today. Keep your brushes moving. If you have any questions, let me know and join me again next week, uh, Tuesday, July 21st. We'll see you then, bye-bye.